Hornets, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be taking a look at one more time at our, uh, at our solving of um, trig functions and making sure that we can write them in the appropriate manner. Uh, keep in mind that uh, I use uh, absolute values uh, outside of my arc tangents and arc sine. They are not going to be used within the arc cosine and you can also have them inside of the arc around the, um, the ratio that's being worked with. So let's start ahead, uh, start and take a look at the very first problem that we are looking at. Tangent of theta is equal to the negative 0.75. And we're going to use uh, that theta is an element uh, from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So we know that we're going to be working in degrees. Now we know that if we take the arc of this, uh, because it is a negative ratio, we know that our result is going to have to be a negative, and it will be opposite the reference angle. So you can either represent the, re the uh, reference angle as the absolute value of the arc tangent of the negative 0.75, or you can always call it that theta is going to be the arc tangent of the absolute value of that negative 0.75. Now, I like to have my absolute values outside, but I know that there are other teachers who prefer to have the absolute value inside, and that would work, for example, with Mr. Wynn. Now, when I do this, I'm now going to be thinking in terms of the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. That's because in the second quadrant, and, and pardon, second and fourth, and that's because the uh, arc tangent is negative in the second and fourth quadrant. Now we know that in order to find our theta in the second quadrant, we have to take 180 degrees and subtract our reference angle. So I'm either going to be subtracting the absolute value of the arc tangent of negative 0.75, or I'm subtracting the arc tangent of the absolute value of negative 0.75. Either way, you're going to be adding that uh, or subtracting that reference angle. Excuse me. Make sure I have an eraser here that I can use. And we're going to subtract. Now keep in mind that if I'm subtracting the absolute, the, this absolute value of the arc tangent of negative 0.75, then I can just as easily say that my theta 1 in the, in the second quadrant is going to have to be 180 plus the actual result that we get from our arc tangent negative ratio. Both of these, in my opinion, are acceptable and would be allowed. Now, when we try to do the fourth quadrant, we have to remember that theta 2 is going to be 360 degrees minus the reference angle. And once again, I either take the absolute value of the arc tangent of negative 0.75 or, because it is a negative value, I can add it. This is the idea of what we were working on with our calculator. By simply taking that negative reference angle, adding pi, will give us the first one, or 180, and then adding 180 again. So once again, it is up to you how you wish to represent it. Either way, what you need to remember is that when we take the arc tangent of a negative ratio we will get the opposite of the reference angle, a negative result. And now we just have to use it in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. The next question that we have that we're going to work with is the solving of the square root of 2 cosine of theta, sine of theta, minus cosine of theta, and then it equals 2 cosine of theta. Now, we're going to want to add or subtract 2 cosine of theta from both sides, and I'm going to just show that to you. Again, this is equality. We're using the law of equality, and I'm left with the root 2 cosine of theta, sine of theta, minus now 3 cosines of theta, and this has to equal 0. Since it equals 0, I can now factor it, and I'm going to factor out the GCF, which is the cosine of theta. I'm left with root 2 sine of theta minus 3. 
and it still equals zero. Now we can use our zero property, which says that either the cosine of theta is equal to zero, or the square root of two sine of theta minus three is also equal to zero. Now we know that cosine is equal to zero in the radian mode. So once again, we're talking about theta is between zero and two pi. And I would end up with pi over two, and I would have three pi over two. Now, if I were using degree mode, I would have 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Once again, depending upon what you are working with. Now, remember, you can always convert things from uh, radian to degree, degree to radian when you're working with it. But when you're solving, you do need to double check what your domain might be. We're now going to go ahead and we're going to solve the second part. Sine of theta turns out to equal 3 over root 2. And here we run into a problem. 3 over root 2 is greater than 1, and the sine can only be between or equal to negative 1 and 1. Since 3 over root 2 is greater than 1, there is no solution for this portion of our problem. Our answers are therefore in radian mode, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Now, the reason why I gave you this next problem is twofold. Once again, I want people to start recognizing that we can factor out things like um, the 4 sine squared of theta minus 9. Now, this is a difference of squares, so when we are asked to solve it, and we are in radian mode, 0 to pi, uh, to pi, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 9 to both sides, and then divide by 4 if I were trying to work with squaring both sides. Yeah, I'm going to square root both sides. I get the absolute value for the sine of theta, and this then leaves me with 3 over 2. Now, everybody tends to forget that when we drop the theta, we get two answers, negative three halves, or sine of theta is equal to positive three halves. Now, by completing the square, you alleviate this problem. It immediately goes into two sine of theta minus three times two sine of theta plus three, our difference of squares formula that we've been learning and working with in both Algebra 2 and Algebra 1. When we set each equal to zero, we end up getting the same answer, but now we do not have to worry about forgetting the absolute value. Once again, a lot of people tend to forget the absolute value. If you complete this, if you work with the factoring, that doesn't happen. Notice we now have the sine of theta as three halves, and we have the sine of theta is negative 3 halves. And we immediately go to where we need to. Once again, the issue is if you are using uh, solving by taking the square root on both sides, you have to remember you end up with the square root of the sine squared, which is by definition an absolute value. When we drop the absolute value, we get two uh, possible answers that we can work with. Now, just as we saw in the last problem, because sine can only be between negative 1 and 1, we know that there is no solution to this problem. Now, once again, I threw it at you so that you could kind of see the idea of factoring and get that uh, one more time, and also to look for extraneous solutions, solutions that are not possible. In our next question, we have solving... And this time we're looking at the sine of one half of theta is equal to root two, root three over two. And once again, I'm going to be in radian mode. Now, please be aware, um, you'll notice we're going to go beyond two pi quite often, and we may want to put it into the common denominator of our solutions. Now, you can either go from the sine is going to be root three over two at pi over three, and 2 pi over 3, or you can use the dummy variable. It is entirely up to you. 
most people have reached the point where the dummy variable is no longer necessary. And now I have plus 2 pi k, my period. Rotations are k, 2 pi k. I'm going to multiply everything by 2 on both sides, and I end up with theta equaling 2 pi over 3 plus 4 pi k. And then once again, theta equals 4 pi over 3 plus 4 pi k. It's at this time that I want to find out where am I going to in terms of thirds. And we can see that this is going to be 21 pi thirds. Secondly, I'm going to need to find out how much I'm going in terms of thirds. So we're going to change this to 2 pi over 3 plus 12 pi over 3 times k. The second one, once again, this is my first option. The second option is 4 pi over 3, and we are adding, once again, 12 pi over 3k. Now I can start with my first solution, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. And then when I add 12, I end up with 14 pi k, and, pardon, 14 thirds pi k. Excuse me, as I correct that, I misspoke. And then I'm going to add another 12 to the 4 thirds pi, and that's going to give me 16 pi thirds. Now you'll notice if I add another 12 pi to the 14 pi, I'm going to get 26 pi thirds. That is outside of our range, or domain, excuse me, of theta, and we cannot use it. If I add another 12 pi thirds to the 16 pi thirds, I get 28 pi thirds, and that is also beyond the domain that I want. As a result, my only formula, or my only solutions are 2 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, 14 pi thirds, and 16 pi thirds. Now the last question that I'm going to ask you is simply going to ask you to relate your formulas for the sine of either alpha plus beta or the sine of alpha minus beta or the cosine of alpha plus beta cosine of alpha minus beta, and then I expect you to also know the tangent of alpha plus beta or the tangent of alpha minus beta. Now, if we're working with the sine here, this is going to be sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Notice that the sine is in between then we would have sine alpha cosine beta, and we would have a minus cosine alpha sine beta. Cosine is going to be cosine alpha cosine beta, but now the sine is opposite, and we end with sine alpha sine beta. In the next problem, we're going to have cosine of alpha cosine of beta, and now, once again, they're opposite in between with sine alpha, sine beta. Then we have our tangents. Now, we have two tangents. They are either tangent alpha plus tangent beta divided by 1 minus tan alpha, tan beta. The last one, let's do it down here, is make sure you can see that tan alpha minus tan beta divided by 1 minus, oh, pardon, 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. Now, I do expect you to know your sum formulas as well, or your double angle. Um, so be aware, I could just as easily ask you about the double angle, and I could ask you to tell me what is the, the uh, sine of, uh, let's see, sine of 2 alpha, that's an option. So sine of 2 alpha, in which case I would have 2 sine alpha, cosine alpha. Then we could have the cosine of 2 alpha, and you're going to have to decide which of the formulas you want, as there are multiple forms for the cosine. One of the easier is the cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, but a lot of people mix this up because they think it's the Pythagorean theorem. It is not.
please be careful. The next possible formula that you could have is the two cosine of alpha minus one. Oh, and that's a squared, excuse me. And the third is one plus, uh, pardon, one minus, see, notice I have to think about it a minute, trying to jump too fast, one minus two sine squared alpha. Now you can get these formulas by simply working with sine alpha plus alpha or cosine alpha plus alpha or tangent alpha plus alpha, which means that our tangent of two alpha is going to end up being two tangent of alpha over one minus tangent squared of alpha. Alrighty, so here we have the formulas that we need to know. These are the ones that I will expect you to know for the chapter test when it's time for you to do it. Um, and for those of you who do not uh, have my class, I recommend you generally know these as they are going to be necessary as you continue into higher level mathematics. Granted, you'll also have to learn things like the power reduction formula, but you can wait on those as needed. Thank you very much, Hornets. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please remember to click like, and we will see you in the future. Take care, be safe, and be kind to each other. Remember, it's easy to be mean, so try harder and try and be nice to each other. Stop and think about what you do and what you say. We never know how someone will interpret our words. All righty. Be well and take care of people. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye, Hornets.